All right, welcome back. You're listening to Chiana Clay in the afternoon. We're talking about sports yes, here at 89.3 KSB Bellevue. We just finished with NFL, so we're moving on to the college basketball. And let's talk about the struggling young UW <laughs> basketball team. I can't even watch him anymore. It's so frustrating. <laughs> I know Spencer Hawes couldn't play because the whole ankle condition yeah. thing, but they have no one. No one at all who decides that, you know what, I'm going to take this ball to the hoop and dunk it. There's nobody on the team who does that. Yeah, and that, you really do need that in college basketball. Like I think you need three things in college basketball. You need a kid who can rebound and block shots for you, who plays good defense also. And then you need a kid, a slasher, who dunks and stuff. And then you just need a true point guard. Yeah, I mean, you just set it up like the Bulls set it up. Yeah. Rodman, Pippen, Jordan. Yeah. If you have guys who fit that mold, then you're set. A guy who can bring it up, who's like 6'6", and mm-hmm. slashes and stuff. A great shooter, and like even if you can't, a great slasher too. Yeah. And a rebounder. That's all you need. Yep. And uh, I mean... They have it, kind of. They I would, have the pieces to I do know. I know. I see Quincy Pondexter next year being that slasher. slasher yeah. But this year, I just don't think too he's young, strong enough. I, yep. He hasn't played enough. I mean, he played with two big centers in high school. The Lowe's, Lopez twins were at Stanford. So I think that kind of hurt him in a way because yeah. he never had to drive to the hoop because he, he just, just got the ball on the outside and did him, like, intermediate jumps. Yeah, he's a good player. Like, he plays great defense. Like, he can guard anyone on the court. But yeah. The kid who I think needs to step up his game just a little bit more is Justin Dentman. Like, yeah, to tell I mean, the truth. I, I watched that guy, and I mean, he reminds me of like Nate Robinson at times. Yeah, without the jumping capability, yeah. and then there's times where he cuts to the hoop, and you think, oh, he's gonna get it, and then he gets blocked because he can't jump. Yeah, I it's mean, like he's a good passer, though. Like, yeah, I mean, he played magnificent last year. I mean, yeah. I, I just don't understand how it's kind of turned off for him. It's just they can't win games. When you have five seconds left on the shot clock and you do fadeaway threes with Ryan Appleby, it's not going to work. Yeah, they're UW's just like Gonzaga. They're missing their star player from last year, a guy they depended on to win games for them, and that's Brandon Roy. I think this team misses Brandon Roy so much. I know. He even showed up big for Portland. I mean, he had 28 points career last night, high yeah. and hit like a game-winning shot, so they'd win 99-95. to yep. It's just like... They need that. They well, he's need a natural leader. Or even like a Trey Simmons type guy yeah. or Bobby Jones who just played lockdown D. I mean, no one could get by him. That's what they need Joel Smith for who's on injured reserve. It looks like he's going to red shirt. Yeah. So, I mean, that's what they need. They needed that, and they didn't get it. I year. mean, the defense they played against the Washington State Cougars was, was the pitiful. most pathetic thing I've ever seen. They let Kyle Weaver and like no-name kids just drive right down the middle and just yeah, dunk it. It's not like they were shooting outside shots and like shooting no. ridiculous like Arizona was when they no. played Arizona. Yeah. Um, they, weren't, they didn't have that high of a shooting percentage. They just got layup after layup after fast break after fast break and that's not WSU's style no. of basketball no. at all. They usually slow it down. They worry yeah. about the defensive end. I think Washington State's a great team. I'll tell you the truth, like they look good together. Yeah, I mean, and Oregon looks scary too. Not only does UW have to play like WSU again and UCLA, they're playing Oregon next week. I mean, they could be one. And I think eight. they play them Thursday. Yeah, easily one and eight in the Pac-10. Yeah. But if they somehow win that Oregon game, this looks like the 2003, 2014 maybe if they yeah. go on a run. But I just don't see Oh, that, that took the Pac-10 championship. Yeah, that had that turnaround game in Oregon State and yeah. stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I just don't see them doing that this year. Too young. The only way I see it is at the end of the year in the Pac-10 tournament. Because they'll be older. I mean, they'll get more time under their belt. I mean, can't really say they'll be older because yeah. they're still freshmen. But they'll be more ready. I think I don't think Spencer Hawes will leave after this year. He does not look ready. At times, he looks scared and like... I don't know. He's a great post player, but him oh, running yeah. up and down the court. He does not look fast. No, he's. T- like, if we had him last year, he probably wouldn't have played that much. No, no. Because he wouldn't have fit in the style at all, because we were just running up and I down mean, the court as often as possible. His post moves are, like, amazing. Like, I think, like, he oh, looks good ridiculous. down below. I know, but, like, he does go to the hook shot a lot. Yeah. I mean, it, but it works. So, I mean. I mean, it's not bad to have a dominant center, or not a dominant center, but a scoring center like yeah. that. Yeah. 
But you I, need I your son to do other things. If he really wants to, I think he could go. Yeah. And I only base that on Robert Swift was drafted by the Sonics. Yeah. I mean, like, there's a lot uh, of Sene. There's just Sene, like, played in the African leagues yeah. and got, like, four points a game and got drafted. Oh, Spencer like, Hawes would definitely make it in the first round. Yeah. But I think he wants to be a lottery pick. Yeah. And that's when he stays, if he wants to be a lottery pick. But well, if he's okay with being, you know, yeah, and he, 16th pick. He has ties to UW, like his dad and grandfa- yeah. grandfather played. So I think he'll stay another year he wants to take this UW team through a good run in the NCAA tournament yeah I'm excited for Brockman because he's the one guy who's playing well yeah, and he's gonna player. be a junior next year and he's staying all four because he's a four four year guy he doesn't leave early yeah like he's not I, tall enough and stuff yeah, like that I heard talks that like his freshman year coming into UW like he could have gone to the NBA but after seeing him playing, like I am definitely know that he's a four-year player. Yeah, I mean, it's just like he didn't, I personally think he didn't have enough athleticism on offense to go yeah, to the NBA. Yeah. He plays good defense. He's but a it's big just, kid. He's not athletic and quick enough on the offensive end to be in the NBA. Yeah, like, I think he'll make a roster like yeah. after four years when he's polished. Like, oh, Randy he'll be Roy good. Stuff, he'll be I good after senior him. year. Yeah. He'll be great. But Pac-10 is pretty much up in the air. Like, I think anyone can beat anyone, except for Oregon State and Arizona State. Yeah, I mean, I agree. But I think, like, it's UCLA's to take. You yeah. know what I mean? Well, they, they're number two in the their, nation. Yeah, they've yeah. proven themselves. They beat Arizona. I know they lost to Oregon, but it but wasn't was like they lost Oregon. by a lot. That was at Oregon, too. They lost by one punto. And Aaron Brooks went off in that game, a kid from Franklin High School around here. Yeah, who popped uh, Ryan Appleby in the face last, last year. year. I'll never forget that. That was one of the funniest slash horrific moments I've ever seen uh, because he tried to pretend like he didn't do it. You know what I'm talking about? He does a rip move, pops him right in the nose. I mean, just goes straight down. He goes, oh, I was just doing a rip move. I didn't even My mean bad. to do it. My yeah. bad. Watch, you watch the replay. Blatant elbow right to the dome. Yeah. Hey, well, that's an, speaking of Ryan Appleby, I don't know what. What do you think he's? Do you think the coach tells him to take those threes sometimes when he well, just pulls up and? Just, I don't know. I think it's the only thing he can do. Because I mean, but like that deep. <sighs> it's beautiful when it goes in, though. I know. I mean, but, it does go. Okay, he either makes man. it or airballs it. Yeah, he's just like Trey Simmons, man. He'll hit five in a row or he'll miss five in a row. Yeah. I mean, like the guy is a streaky shooter, but when he's on, and how quick that release is, it's oh, yeah. amazing. Yeah, they could be a scary team if they do make it in a tournament. Like they'd be like a ten, eleven, twelve seed, but yeah, it's almost, they have a lot of work to do. I mean, like if they somehow win the Pac-10 tournament, because I think that's the only way they can get in now is yeah. winning the Pac-10 tournament. I don't think they have any quality wins. Yeah. You come in as like a fourteen seed, or not even. I'm. Um, yeah, I mean, you could technically come in as a 14 seed, maybe a 12 or 11 seed, 10 seed, because you're in a hard yeah. conference. They have to save all those seeds for the 31 automatic from the small conferences, too. Yeah, but, I mean, they do, if they win the Pac-10 tournament, they do get in. I mean, it doesn't oh, matter yeah. your record at all. I mean, yeah. if you win, you're in. Yeah, I don't know. They don't really have a quality win, though. Like, I mean, the only one was LSU, and, I mean... I can't think of any other one. I can't either. I mean, they don't have any right now. It was dumb scheduling by the Huskies. They they well, play all these home games against a bunch of no names. Because they're so young, if they went on the road and just got pummeled early, then they'd have yeah. no confidence. Yeah, but then it was almost like delaying the inevitable a little bit. I know, bit. but okay, get an away game against I don't know, like Boise State or Eastern or something. Or, or Idaho, Idaho like play Idaho away. Don't schedule your first away game against Gonzaga. At, yeah. at a loud state, at a loud arena. I mean, against a very good Gonzaga team that just came off wins like off North Carolina and stuff like that. I mean, that was dumb, 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 dumb. Yeah, yeah. So, what do you think of this whole uh, first game with Melo and Allen Iverson? I don't know. That was that was a fun game. Well, like I thought, I forgot he was coming back. Like that was a long fifteen games to me. Oh, I know. Like. It seemed way longer than that. I mean, yeah. that fight. To me, wasn't even one of the biggest it fights December, in NBA history. It was December 16th. He was out over a month. Yeah, I know. But it's just they play so much, yeah. you know. Um, you know, there's a guy who wrote in the paper today for the Seattle Times name.